There are hurdles with keeping any pet, but more so with reptiles, the laws around the world sometimes are very prohibitive. So today let's go over the top five reptiles that anybody can keep are legal everywhere. My name's Adam, this is Alora. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I don't think we've shown this beauty on the channel yet. This is Alora, the leopard gecko. She looks like she's full of eggs. We're gonna do a video about breeding leopard geckos soon because we have a whole bunch in the other room, but that's not what today's video is about. Today we're talking about reptile laws because it is in the news constantly where FWC in Florida is trying to make, you know, certain things illegal, basically everything. Or now in Texas, they're trying to make constrictors illegal and basically around the country of the US, we have these issues. Now I'm up here in Canada, we have a lot of bylaws. You can't keep snakes over a certain amount of length and meters. You can't keep lizards over a certain amount. You can't keep certain species. So I wanna make a list of animals that everybody can keep. Now, of course, there are countries where you're only allowed to keep things that are native to you, or you can't keep things that are native. So I'm talking about you, Australia, and many other countries as well. So Australia, there is gonna be two on this list that you can't keep because they're not native, but the other three are. But in general, unless we're talking about you can't keep because of native or not native, these are the animals that you're not gonna run into issues with uh, being too long if it's a snake, being a species that's prohibited because it's dangerous or whatever silly goosery they say to pass these laws. So no lizards over one foot, no snakes over two feet. Let's get going. Oh, and no venomous stuff, obviously. Alora, number one. Number five, actually, leopard geckos. Number five is leopard geckos because they're legal basically everywhere. Now, I know that there are places like mainland China where there's a certain amount of things you're allowed to keep, but basically everywhere else in the world, if it's not Australia, you can keep these because there's no specific laws saying you can't keep leopard geckos. These guys are gonna be six, seven, eight inches long unless you get a super giant, but either way, you're never gonna get a leopard gecko over one foot. And let me clarify before you comment, because I know super giants can get big. What we're talking about in terms of length in almost every law or bylaw that I've read knows to vent. So that doesn't mean from here to here. That means from there to here. So that means that we're measuring this, not all of this, right? That is the difference. And that's how we're gonna get away with some of the snakes. So know your bylaws. And if yours might be different, check. I don't know, please don't comment. Well, what's the bylaw in Timbuktu, Kentucky? I don't know, you have to check that. I don't know the bylaws everywhere. However, leopard geckos, I've never seen a law against ever, not once, nowhere, no how. I, I did the whole thing in, the, in Discord talking about, hey, if you've got crazy laws in your area, let me know about it. So I think we're pretty safe with leopard geckos. And it's great because they make one of the best pets in the world in terms of uh, reptiles. These are lizards that are never gonna bite you most of the time. <laughs> I always say that and then that's when I get tagged by something I'm holding. But either way, they got these small little mouths. They're very placid, very docile. You can tell this girl here doesn't wanna get away from me. She's completely fine. And that's, I guess, the downside with leopard geckos is they're a little bit more fragile than something like a bearded dragon, which will not be on this list because some of them get a little bit too big for certain bylaws, being that they are longer than one foot from nose to vent. So leopard geckos coming at number five. I kind of went over everything that we're going to cover in terms of all the laws and rules. So let's just move on to something that you Australians can actually keep. I don't know why I'm talking like there's so many of you, like I think 1.7% of my audience is Australian. I just wanted to include you guys. Okay. All right. Number four. This is for spotted pythons. Actually not, it's pygmy pythons. I wanted to do the Antaresia and I'm gonna show you a bunch of footage of spotted pythons because that's what I have. I have a spotted python, but I've also seen spotted pythons that get over six feet long. This is not normal. Normally they top out around four feet, maybe even smaller, but there are examples where they can get bigger. However, in the same genus, Antaresia, we have pygmy pythons, otherwise known as anthill pythons. Now these pythons are gonna be much tinier. We're talking about two feet or less from nose to vent, sometimes nose to tail tip, right? So these guys are not gonna get you in trouble at all unless there is a bylaw in your area that says nothing in the Python family. Now this is very rare. I don't have any of those, these laws anywhere in Canada that I know of. Of course, correct me in the, in the comment section. You don't need to clap back at me. There are gonna be laws that I've overlooked, but either way, I've never seen one. So if you wanna get a Python, but you have a law in your area that says no snakes over two feet, which is pretty rare in and of itself. It's the smallest length I could find. 
but then you're gonna be fine with the pygmy python. And they're awesome because they're an Australian species, right? So although we can't bring any more in, we have a bunch in captivity and there's really not that many morphs. So because of that, they aren't super expensive. Now, if you wanna get something and say your bylaw says nothing over three feet or four feet, or there's some even places where nine feet is the limit, then you could get a spotted python. Cause to me, these are just a little bit more robust usually a little bit more handleable. Children's pythons are in the same genus, same thing, but if it has to be that tiny, anthill pythons are the best because they're the smallest python in the world. Everyone's gonna wanna know what the heck is that thing. They're beautiful, they have these red colorations, and because they're gonna be semi-arboreal and so small, <laughs> you can have a really cool enclosure that doesn't have to be super big. If you have a big semi-arboreal snake like a boa constrictor, you need a huge tank, right? Or a huge enclosure, I should say. There's no tanks, fish tanks that are that big. But if you want something that acts kind of like a boa constrictor in its movement in the air, let's say, right? In the arborealness perches, that you can get an anthill python and it's a much smaller form. That's kind of the only similarities between the two species. I'm just trying to paint the picture here for a species that you might be more familiar with. And they like it a little bit drier, so it's not as difficult as say a ball python if you live in a place where the furnace is on all winter, drying out your home, or you live in say like, I don't know, Arizona or somewhere like that where it's difficult to keep humidity. You don't have to worry about that with these guys. They like it a little bit more arid. Number three, staying inclusive here, knobtail geckos. Knobtail geckos are very different than leopard geckos, although at first blush, they might look kind of similar. I always think it as a uh, knobtail gecko is kind of like a knobbier, more angry looking leopard gecko. These guys have beautiful faces, really cool eyes, and these hilarious little knob tails. There's a few species of knobtail geckos. I have a knobtail at Levi's or Levy, like it depends how you pronounce it. I know everyone's very different. These are my favorite. They're very bright orange and red. They are really easy to take care of because again, they're pretty arid. So you can keep these guys on a sand mix. You don't have to worry about, you know, like you do have to have a human hide, don't get me wrong, but I think it's pretty easy to mix up this sand mix, which I cover in the leopard gecko care guide right here, but very similar care to leopard geckos in that they're out at the same time of day. They need virtually the same size enclosure. I recommend well, I mean, you can get away with a 20 gallon. Mine are always in something a little bit bigger than that. And they're on the same substrate and they have the same diet. So these guys are gonna eat things like crickets, roaches, stuff like that. They're a bit smaller too. They're four to five inches. So we're way under the one foot limit, or I mean, hopefully you have a bigger limit than that, but of this video, these guidelines, and these guys are just not as handleable as leopard geckos, which is, well, maybe I should have reversed the order, but either way, I think they're just a little bit more unique. They are gonna scream at you. They may try to bite you but they are really, really tiny. So you're not gonna have too many issues with that. They're not gonna have as many morphs as something like a leopard gecko or an African fat tailed gecko, which could fit on the list too. But I just think they're a little bit more unique and they're from Australia. So our Australian friends can have them as well. There's no laws that I've ever seen against knob tail geckos. And the reason that you'd want one as well, just like, look at this freaking thing. How angry can you be in such a tiny package? Hilarious. Now I feel like I'm describing myself. Let's roll on. Number two, back to snakes for a second here. Rubber boas. I love rubber boas. You guys know this. I had one for a short time. Unfortunately, it passed. One of the, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Very sad. But either way, this is the only boa species in Canada, which is where I'm from. The Western part of Canada. It goes into Washington state too, but it's really cool because in North America, we have two boa species. We've got rubber boas, and we have rosy boas, but rosy boas are gonna get over two feet a lot of the time and therefore don't make the list. Rubber boas, however, don't get over two feet from nose to vent. In fact, a lot of cases, they might only get 12 inches from nose to vent. So even if you had the craziest law ever, no snakes over a foot, which like what fits in that, these guys might fit. I mean, up to 80, 18 inches, up to 22 inches if you really get down to it because there are bigger specimens, nose to tail, that measurement is. But either way, the reason that you might want one is because they like it a little bit cooler. They have very slow metabolisms. So they're gonna eat things like mice and really not a lot of them. When it comes to feeding snakes, if you want something that is gonna be cheap over its lifespan, we're talking about rubber boas all day. They look kind of like worms. They have cute little faces. These guys like it so cool that you can see pictures of them literally basking on the snow. No joke, this is not a fixed picture. This is just something that happens in nature. Now I'm not saying if you live in Southern Ontario, go ahead in Western New York, wherever you live, and you have a rubber boa, and then you go and put it, like don't put it on snow for a picture. Like don't 
do that. We're just saying that in it can deal with extremes. Now with something that's really interesting, I don't know what this has to do with this video, but rubber boas, they oftentimes will not eat until they go through a brumation period. So they will be born, right, in the spring. They will have no meals whatsoever. They will brumate through the winter, and then they will come out and start eating. Wild. That means that they're not eating for eight months as soon as they're coming out of the egg. Well, not the egg because they're boas, they're live bearers. As soon as they come out of the mother. Why am I all over the place? So rubber boas will come in at number two, but I wanna go back to lizards and something that everybody can keep. We're talking about pink tongue skinks. Now you guys know I love blue tongue skinks, right? Erwin, Steve, I love these guys. They're fantastic, I love these animals. However, they're too big. Blue tongue skinks get a little bit too big on average. Some of them will get up to 30 plus inches, so they're not gonna fit under one foot. However, a lot of times, these semi-arboreal lizards from Australia are going to get only 12 inches from nose to vent. We're talking up to 18 inches with the tail, but either way, they're gonna come in really, really small. And I love that about these guys because they're kind of like a blue tongue. Like there are some similarities, right? I'm not saying they're exactly like, however, they are, in my opinion, in my experience, they are like a more arboreal, much tinier blue tongue skink. They have the pink tongue instead of the blue tongue. They have a different pattern. Their diet is very, very similar. We're talking about like canned dog foods, and canned cat foods, vegetables, uh, insects, prepared diets, things like that. So a very similar diet. They come from a similar range because blue tongues also come from Australia, Indonesia too. But either way, I just feel like the better entry is the pink tongue because you're gonna get away with it in more areas. And I've never seen a, you can't have pink tongues here ever on a list of banned species anywhere in the world. A species that I would love to have, and of course these guys aren't the cheapest in the world, but you can usually get into them for three or 400 bucks, depending on where you are, of course, it depends area by area. Either way, I think they're amazing. I'd love to get one one day. I think that you might love them and there are no laws, so they absolutely fit on this list. Let me know what you think. What animals do you think have no laws against them anywhere in the world? Drop them below, help everybody out in the comment section. And as always, I wanna say a special thanks. If you hit the like button and hit subscribe, you are rocking my world. Thank you so much. It changes the way people see this channel. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, extra merch, discounts, all sorts of different stuff for as little as $1 a month. You can be part of that. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.